Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Steal the Show, by Michael Port. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Steal the Show 2015 is a practical guide designed to help performers scared of the limelight to settle their nerves and up their game. Drawing on author Michael Port's experience as a professional actor, these sparks are packed with tips and hacks to help you persuade, inform, and motivate. Whether you're presenting your company's latest figures in a meeting, pitching a new business idea, or interviewing for a dream job, these strategies are guaranteed to help you make an impression. Key idea number one, using your acting skills can help you overcome stage fright. Three examples, a manager attends a crucial performance review with his superiors, an up and coming corporate hotshot gives a speech at a convention attended by her industry's leaders. A youthful entrepreneur pitches an ambitious business plan to seasoned venture capitalists. You're not alone if you're shaking just thinking about being in any of those situations. Many people fear the spotlight. Googling public speaking yields 90 million results. Nerve calming advice is first. Why is public speaking scary? It's a show. You're acting when you give a speech or interview for a job. You probably never learned this. Thus the old fear. Public performances challenge us. We worry about fluffing our lines and looking foolish. However, this. You and everyone else are actors. You play different parts in different situations whether you realize it or not. You portray yourself on social media and dating sites. You're performing. Similar changes can be made when Skyping a coworker or talking to your employer at a Christmas party. This is good it indicates you can act. Use your instinctive understanding of performance to improve it. Acting Crash Course. This isn't about getting into your local drama group. It's about mastering a professional method. Author, a former actor, advises. He's a best-selling author, public speaker, and consultant now. That was a significant step, but his acting expertise let him play diverse characters and inspire confidence. We'll learn to follow him in the sparkles. Key idea number two, using your authentic voice makes you more relatable. All roles have scripts and costumes. We often play the professional. Work-related speech and attire are typical. Friendship topics don't work at the office. On Monday mornings, we leave our comfy old jeans in the closet and put on something more professional. It's a crucial act. Mixing personal and professional typically fails. Sam from Accounts may embarrass his increasingly uncomfortable co-workers if he recounts his latest late-night antics. Subordinates won't respect Suzy if she says she didn't deserve her promotion. Playing a character doesn't mean giving up your actual voice the experiences, attitudes, and beliefs that make you who you are. That perspective makes you a more well-rounded professional. That aids socialization. Take Good Morning America anchor Robin Roberts. After coming out as lesbian, viewers saw her differently. They now saw a woman who, like us, was figuring things out. She was able to express herself while anchoring the show. Leaders benefit from such honesty. Lean In by Facebook's Sheryl Sandberg describes her confused thoughts about parenthood, job, and marriage. By relying on her personal experience as a woman in an ultra-competitive, male-dominated business, she made herself approachable to millions of readers and inspired a movement to urge women to pursue their dream careers. How do you discover your voice? Avoid perfectionism. If you're worried about being the most original person in the room, you won't think your unique background, thoughts, and viewpoint are relevant. However, it's how you say it that matters. Imagine a mother singing her child a million times sung lullaby. Her voice conveys genuine affection, not the melody. Key idea number three, successful people adapt while remaining themselves. In the preceding blink, we mentioned authenticity without defining it. What's it? It's often called being yourself. That's okay, but what type of self are we talking about? Though abstract, it's crucial. Take organizational psychologist Herminia Ibarra's 2015 Harvard Business Review essay. Ibarra claims that our self-concept might prevent us from sailing forth or assist us adapt. First, flexibility. Successful people in all fields switch roles. A Marine Corps battalion chief may be a strict disciplinarian at work yet a loving father to his young girls at home. True, chameleons change color. It's showing its full potential, not pretending. When your sense of self is too inflexible, 
You tend to establish a single, immutable style of thinking, feeling, and behaving regardless of the environment. These people have trouble improvising and are intolerant of other viewpoints. They struggle to make major life changes like moving from middle management to leadership or from bachelorhood to marriage. Playing the same role causes tension and restricts your success. Imagine a comic who wants to direct a blockbuster but can't control his class clown act in Hollywood meetings. His fart jokes may make him the life of the party, but no one will give him a million dollars. To master different roles, copy the pros. You should study your daily stars like players study their idol shooting or swinging styles. Admire your office's master networker. Test her plays. This is about developing your own techniques, not impersonating others. Key idea number four, being present improves listening and enriches interactions. Dialogue of the deaf ever heard it. It refers to conversations between persons who aren't listening and are eager to say their well-rehearsed lines. It's a daily frustration in boardrooms and bedrooms worldwide. Less listening means less interesting responses. Your chat partner is less inclined to listen. Early training teaches actors this. Openness yields surprising responses, says former Royal Shakespeare Company voice director Cicely Berry. You'll sound stilted and uninteresting if you're not paying attention. Actors react to what they hear, not create emotions. Listening is worth practicing. Being present works. Whole brain listening, says neuroscientist Seth Horowitz. Like mindfulness. Instead than anticipating disputes or waiting to speak, focus on what's being said. However, you may listen with all your senses and be present. Job interview. Your interviewer's dark circles, lack of eye contact, and triple espresso are as informative as his corporate information. Presentations too. If your audience is taking notes, you've caught their attention. If they're staring blankly, it may be time to switch things up. This makes talks like long distance throwing and catching. Imagine throwing a baseball to a 50-yard partner. You watch the ball's arc and listen for the leather gloves thwack. Keep an ear out for evidence that your conversational partner has got your meaning. Key idea number five, you can fake acting. Everybody has. You feel antsy as you approach the stage or enter a conference room. You merely think you don't belong here. That's your inner critic fighting your spotlight time, which many performers endure every time they perform. We'll finish up by looking at how they overcome these self-defeating thoughts in this blink. Acting as if employs imagination to prevent anxiety. It's simple. If you behave like something is true, it's more likely to happen. There's science behind that new age nonsense. Psychiatric Annals published a 2012 study. Thomas Newmark shows that visualizing success improves performance. Your body experiences what you imagine. Brain scans demonstrate a shift in cerebral activity from the rational left hemisphere to the creative right hemisphere, creating new neural pathways. Power posing in front of a mirror is another option. Superheroes with hands on hips and legs apart are a good example. Harvard psychologist Amy Cuddy found physiological impacts from these positions. In 2010, she found that performing confidently in front of a mirror boosts confidence. As Cuddy says, it can increase testosterone, a hormone linked to power and control, by 20% and reduce cortisol, a stress hormone, by 25%. Visualization has helped the author. After receiving his U.S. Coast Guard boat license, mooring his yacht was still nerve-wracking, especially in heavy weather. More experienced captains informed him they always anticipated going through the operation before steering their boats into their docks. Before going public, they practiced like actors. That proves acting's power. You're born to perform. You change roles daily. However, that intuitive awareness of performing rarely prepares you for those terrifying moments in the spotlight. How should you perform next time? Remember that perfect is the enemy of good and allow your inner voice emerge. Train your listening skills, be a chameleon, and act like if you're already a great actor and you'll improve your acting quickly. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.